Welcome to Church of the Chair, where we all have a twinner out there somewhere. I'm your host, E, and today... Regulators, mount up. If you're new around here, I need to give you a warning. In this series, I will be spoiling all of Stephen King's work, so if you haven't read all of his stuff, I suggest you click away now. You've been warned. Today, we're talking about The Regulators, the lost Richard Bachman book. Uh, also by Stephen King. So how does the regulators tie into the Dark Tower universe and the Stephen King universe in general? Let's get into that. My original theorist video for the regulators holds pride of place in my entire catalog. It is my favorite theorist episode. Yes, even more so than Kit, more so than the Tommyknockers, more so than Dreamcatcher. I articulated everything I wanted to get across in that video, so I'm going to let my own twinner speak for himself. As far as the regulators and desperation are concerned, they are considered twinners in the Stephen King universe. And a twinner is the same person, just different maybe uh, life, maybe character development, that kind of, de that kind of deal. Um, they are the same person. They are uh, somewhat connected, but only by like their appearance, maybe their blood type, that that kind of thing. But usually, their characters are completely different, other than maybe their the, the, their strongest character trait, like maybe if they're an artist or an author. Let's start talking about the Dark Tower connections and the Universe connections. Okay, so Tack and Pennywise have got to be, if not the same uh, species, they have to be on the same level of the tower kind of deal, right? Um, because Tack is a Wyson. Um, I don't know that we've ever found out what Pennywise is, but I'm almost fighting for the, uh, the, the idea that these creatures are nothing more than their lights. Uh, you have the Wyson, which is Tack. Tack is a Wyson. That's his species. Um, you have Tack as uh, red lights, and then you have uh, Pennywise, and spoilers for it, uh, Pennywise as white lights or dead lights. He has the bright white lights, and then you have the Weiss and has the red lights. And there are, there are connecting tissues for all of these creatures. You have Tack, who um, is oddly enough referred to as Tack the Outsider in a Stephen King desk calendar at one point in time. Oh, um, which I guess, kind of spoilers for The Outsider, too, but um, you have uh, Pennywise, who, who shapeshifts and can get, in, who feeds off fear, I almost said get into people's minds, not really, I mean, he kind of goes into Henry Bowers a little bit, but it's more of a persuasion, so maybe Pennywise isn't as strong as his home dude, Tack, who knows, um, and then you have Tack himself, who who can go into people and who can lock them away in their own minds. Mr. Gray, anybody? Is there a, you know, anybody? Come on. I mean, these, these connections are pretty obvious at this point. I had someone try to tell me that there was no way that, uh, that uh, the Grays were connected to Pennywise or anything else. They were just aliens. No, I mean, they do the same things. So, and whether or not they're coming from outer space or they're coming through a thinny or they're coming through doors, their damn selves, who knows? But that's my connection to, to the universes there, and it, it connects most of my stuff. Some subtle references to the Dark Tower. There is a mention of someone going off the beam, um, which is in Misery and several other books. I think it's in Dolores Claiborne. Um, I know it's in the Gerald's Game movie, which is cool, and I think it's in Gerald's Game also. I'd have to go back and check. Um, but the mention of off the beam pops up every now and again. When someone is crazy, they're off the beam in the Stephen King universe. I thought that little aspect was cool. Also, this story happens, um, I, I think it's on Poplar Street, but it's right next to Bear Street. Um, let, let, me, let me look this up before someone down it, it, before someone down in the comments goes, Hey, E, no, it happens on Hootie What's It Street. Yeah, it's uh, Bear Street crosses uh, and so's Hyacinth. Am I saying that right? Hyacinth? I don't know. Um, but it all happens on Poplar Street. But there is a Bear Street and there's a Bear Street Woods and you have the, you know, the, the beam of the bear. You also have the, the connection, which is kind of loose. Don't at me kind of loose because you have uh, Shattuck, what's it, Shardick, sorry, Shardick um, in, at the beginning of the Wastelands and he's a bear with a, what's he got on his head? 
Unless these vans got a satellite dish, right? Or communication disc, whatever you want to call it. I know it seems, I know it seems uh, to be far-fetched, but think about it this way. Think of the uh, ending of Wolves of the Kala. Think of the wolves. Think about the mishmash of Doctor Doom, Harry Potter, all that stuff that is mashed together that's just a jumble of all these stories told over time. What if Shardik, what if that's connected to the Vans and to Bear Street? What if that is an allusion to all of that? I think that would be rad as hell. Another thing that I want to bring up that I didn't catch myself um, that I'm still not entirely entirely convinced of and I got my notes over here but uh the regulators or can toy um, who serve the crimson regulators are can toy who serve the crimson king and the big coffin hunters from uh, wizarding glass were sometimes called regulators now this is on the stephenking.com. This isn't fan connections. This is actually on the Dark Tower connections on stephenking.com that mentions that the regulators are Cantoy and the big coffin hunters were regulators. Given how the regulators ends, do you think there's any chance that maybe the ghosts of the big coffin hunters are what are powering or maybe the the extended mind of of tack i don't i don't know man there's 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 so many possibilities and i would love to hear from you guys about that down there in the doobly doo let's have a conversation about that one especially the big coffin hunters being the regulators um now as far as the entities tack the entity of tack in desperation and in the the regulators first off tack is a wholly underrated villain. He's one of the best, best monsters in all of Stephen King's lore. <clears throat> At least I feel this way, and several people have brought it up um, on my Regulators review that um, that tack is a good one. At least at least two people, I know. Um, so maybe I'm inflating that by saying several people, but I apologize. <laughs> Anyways, so, but you have this entity tack who, in, the, in desperation, he would completely erase the person that he took over. Um, he, he takes over the, uh, what is it, the Carver mother, um, this is, what's her name, Mary? Because in this one, she's Ellen. I can't remember if it's the same or not. I think the, uh, the mother and daughter actually switch names and places, so the daughter becomes the mother, uh, because the mother's name is Pi in this one, whereas Pi, the sister, dies at the beginning of desperation. Um, you have, uh, you, you, and then it, Kali and Trajan, I mean, there's nothing left of Kali in there, and, and I was thinking about why. Um, now, Seth Garen, uh, the little boy who Seth is inside of in Regulators, is autistic. He's, he's what is called Hollywood autistic, because he's a genius, and he, you know, saves the day with his genius. So, it's when writers, or, well, just writers, because writers work on movies, too. Writers take an uh, autistic person, make them, well, what was it, what did it used to be called, an idiot savant? Um, and this is pretty much what's happening here. They're contained in that brain space. Um, so, I'm wondering if it's because Seth Garen was so powerful himself as an aut autistic uh, a telepath, or however it's explained, and I'm wondering if if Seth had some of these powers, like maybe he would, maybe he has a touch of the shine, and that's why Tack was able to reach out to him so far as he was traveling through. Maybe that's also why he was able to piggyback on him instead of just explode his damn head like everybody else, because you have the homeless guy with the shopping cart that's stuck to the cactus, which is an amazing scene, uh, an amazing visual in this book. You have that. Uh, and the eyes pop out of the head, uh, whereas in desperation, just the body starts failing. Um, just minute things that normally wouldn't harm a human being, when Tack takes over the body, just completely destroys and decimates the human body. But in this one, it causes a pressure that pops the eyes out of their heads, which is a great great visual because uh, you have Peter Jackson it happens to you have the homeless guy with the shopping cart and then you have a uh, Cami Reed at the end with her head exploding which is an amazing amazing visual also another thing that backs up my thought that there's a shine to uh, there, there's a shine or a te telepathic power to Seth without Tack is Tack isn't inside Seth anymore when Seth tell forces Cami to shoot him once again 
here at the end in the later videos I got fewer and fewer theories from my viewership from you guys out there I received no comments about your own theories I didn't get any corrections for this one not really anything other than talking about whether you liked disliked or felt meh about the book so please this time around if you have any further theories to add on to what I said in the original video I would absolutely love to hear from you down there in the comments also make sure to mention if I missed anything if you have any corrections of anything I said in this video or again if you have any theories yourself on how the regulators tie into the Dark Tower and the Stephen King universe in general leave all that down there in the comments but until next time all hail the chair